Howdy, it's Tubal Kane once again, and in this video, which is number 225, Tips, I'm going to show you how to set the gears on the Atlas lathe uh, in order to cut metric threads, and then in the next one, 226, I will actually cut a metric thread for you. Now be sure and go back and start at number 220, because this is a long series on the Atlas lathe, uh, perhaps 8 or 10 videos on... Uh, the gearboxes and change gears and so on and uh, uh, make sure you watch all of those because they all lead up to, to this uh, video here and the next few on uh, metric threads. Do not confuse these videos with my complete Atlas Craftsman series that is a video course which I offer in other uh, uh, videos and that is 40 chapters, about 11 hours, so you might want to be uh, looking at that too, but I'm covering uh, quite a bit of information also in free YouTube on these Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathes because there's an awful lot of them around. I've had requests over the years to do videos on uh, cutting metric threads, and now I'm actually doing it, and it's not something I do very often, but it certainly can be done on uh, this type of lathe. It's, however, easier to do if you have an import lathe that already has that uh, capability right on the quick change gearbox. But here we have uh, change gears that I'm going to change here and show you how in a minute. And uh, in a later video, I'm also going to put the quick change gearbox back onto this lathe in place of the change gears. But uh, you will see that uh, you cannot cut metric threads using the quick change gearbox. You need the change gears. So let's step over to the bench now and take a look at some of the things involved in uh, setting up the gears to cut metric threads. I know I'm repeating myself, but uh, this is the Atlas Craftsman uh, lathe operations book and you get this. It really is a wonderful book. And I always said that before, but here on page 149 there's some interesting information here, I think, and it's about special threads and feeds, and I'm going to read it for you. Engineers uh, charted over a thousand threads and feeds between uh, the coarsest thread and the finest feed. Tables 1 and 2 of this section give the proper setups for a wide variety of special threads and feeds. Most of these setups are exact. Are exact. Some are accurate to a limited uh, limits that are mentioned. Table 3 gives setups for metric threads with pitches between 0.5 and a full 7 millimeters. And I'm going to turn to that chart here directly, but one other thing first. I just want to point out that with metric threads, of course the diameter is going to be in millimeters rather than thousands, although you can convert it and use uh, thousandths if you do not have a metric micrometer and uh, I guess you'd call that a soft conversion but nevertheless it's going to work but something that's different about the metric threads is that instead of uh, stating the pitch in threads per inch the pitch is the distance from the top of one thread to the next for P so when I cut this thread that is a 1.75 millimeter pitch the distance between the arrowheads here is 1.75 millimeter and that's what we're setting the gears for. This page 153 and that page number may vary from uh, edition to edition of this book but this is uh, the gear setups for metric threads and notice there's really uh, quite a few of them uh, uh, as mentioned before from 0.5 clear up to a uh, pitch of uh, 7 millimeters I am particularly interested here in uh, the 1.75, so that's how I'm going to set the uh, gears. I'm going to read this paragraph at the top of the page at the risk of boring you, but uh, to some people this may be significant, but it says two of the standard change gears furnished with the Master Craftsman lathe, the 50 tooth tooth gear and the 44 tooth gear combined to give you a ratio of 44 to 52 or and then they give you a decimal there which is an almost exact function of 2.54 the English to metric ratio 
Thus, it is possible to cut metric threads accurate to extremely close limits of one part in 3,000. So, since these are just standard gears, these are probably approximations, but they, they are very close approximations to the metric, and it's going to work just fine. Perhaps you own a metric set of taps and dies, such as this Ace uh, Superset. That's a superset, all right. It's 3 millimeters through 12 millimeters, and it's got taps and tap wrenches. And in the lower section, of course, it's got the dies. But there's a good chart here inside the cover that also applies to metric threads, and it gives you uh, uh, tap drill sizes. But it's uh, kind of funny, of course, that they convert them all to, to fractional here That uh, in the U.S. imperial system. But if you look here in the 12 millimeter area, which is what we're concerned with, and remember 12 millimeter is just a little bit smaller than half inch. In fact, it's 0.472 thousandths. But we have a, a 12 millimeter by 1.25, and a, uh, but that one's not included in the set. But we also have one with, one with a 1.25. 5-0 pitch and a 1.75 and when I just uh, came back from the hardware store and looked at the metric nuts and I had to buy a metric nut for a dollar I could have made one here but that's a dollar for a metric nut and uh, they offered four or five different pitches in uh, the 12 millimeter so you have to determine the pitch before you cut your thread and that can be done of course with uh, a thread pitch gauge, and this is a metric thread pitch gauge. And I've got that pulled out to 1.75. Those of you in Europe and other countries have been using the metric system basically forever, and we get belittled here in the United States all the time for using the imperial system. But we actually use both, but, but uh, us old timers tend to, to stick with the, the imperial system. But if you look at uh, cars such as uh, Fords and, and uh, General Motors, well, all of them, uh, everything is in metric because they're world corporations now. But, and the metric system is, uh, I will admit, and I've studied it in science even as a boy, that it is a superior system that's really easy to understand. Now, if you've never uh, examined it or spent any time uh, studying it, you might find that it, uh, it just seems ridiculous to you, but, but it is a good system. And that's kind of what we're concerned, not kind of, that's what we're concerned with today in uh, this video. So now I'm going to go over to the lathe and bring the banjo to the bench here and change the gears. I brought the quadrant over to the bench. I'm ready to change the gears. And uh, looking at the book again now, and, uh, you know, in the last little clip here, I just failed to mention uh, when I had this set up that this is a nice chart here that uh, has uh, both metric and English. And, you know, it helps you understand the relationship between the two. And there are many other charts available. This doesn't have threads on it, but there are many charts that do. Okay, on this page now, which I showed you a few minutes ago, and I laid a piece of paper there as a uh, marker. We're interested in the 1.75. So, with that in mind, the gear on the screw is going to be a 36. The uh, gears in position D are a 52 in the back and a 56 in the front. Nothing in position C. Position B is a 20, and that's just used as a spacer, that's what the S is, and uh, that's in the, the back, and position B in the front is a 46, the I means it's just an idler, and over here in position A, in the back it's a 48, and in the front it's a 32, and in that compound tumbler gear, when we go back to the lathe, it's going to be a 32 tooth, that's that duplex compound gear. Now, I wrote that all down, too, so it's easier for me, and I don't get my book dirty. Again, I know I'm repeating this, and it was in every one of the videos, but I have to assume that there are some people that didn't see the other videos, but here's the quadrant or the, the banjo, and remember that this is position A, 
from about the middle out where I got the pencil line, position B, position C, and position D. And those are the references given in the chart. Now I knew I'd have to pay for this when I put uh, the gear lube on there the other day, so this is going to be a heck of a mess when I take this off. But off camera, I'm just going to strip all the gears off and start from scratch to uh, change all the gears. And again, it's laborious, cumbersome, time consuming. But uh, I thought I had this set for what I finally wanted to leave it on, which was, uh, you recall, a fine longitudinal feed of about uh, two and a half thousandths. But uh, no, I'm going to go to metric now. Strip them off. I'm ready to set the gears up. So the first thing I'm going to do, it's been stripped, as you can see, and cleaned. Uh, make sure that there's no chips in there and oil, everything, as you put it together. Now, do not bang on these gears. If you have to tap, use a wooden dowel and a, and a mallet just to, to tap them ever so lightly. Remember, they're made of Zamac and subject to damage. So right here, remember, this is the lead screw, the end of the lead screw. And that's a 36 tooth gear on screw is what they call it. That's the 36. Got to line up the uh, keys. Goes on real easy when the camera isn't running. Real easy. Then the keyed spacer or bushing, beveled washer, and finished nut. That's the first gear. In position D, which is this slot, looking here, it's a 52 in the back and a 56 in the front. So there's the 52, there's the 56, and that's the way it's got to go on, and there's already a bushing in there and I oiled that just a little bit. T-bolt up through the bottom. Like that. And it's engaged uh, on the gear on the bottom here so you cannot see the, uh, the engagement. But I will use that paper method shown in the other videos to set the gear clearance or the gap between the two gears. And it's kind of awkward here because you really can't see it. All is well so far. Now in position B, which is right in here someplace, it calls for a uh, 20 toward the back, that's the spacer, and toward the front, a 46, which is an idler. 20 and a 46. There's a bushing in here. I've oiled it lightly. And I'll set the clearance there with some paper off camera. One last pair of gears and we're ready to go here. So over here in position A, it calls for a 48 in the back and a 32 in the front. And here they are already paired up, again with a bushing. And again, 48 goes in the back, so it'll look like this. Now I'll set that also with some paper. Tighten this up. The gear train is ready to go and put onto the lathe. So let's step over to the Atlas lathe. The quadrant is mounted on the Atlas lathe, and uh, I'm going to bring it up here to engage this tooth with the compound uh, gear here, the uh, 32 tooth part of it, which is toward the back of this little shield. So that'll be brought up. 
checked for clearance, and there's the gear train. Notice I got it unplugged. It do not work with a live system when you're working in the gears or pulleys or belts or anything like that. Let me check the clearance, then I'll run it. There it is, assembled and ready to go for 1.75 millimeter pitch. This is, of course, much faster than it will run for threading because I'll be in back here. And I did put a little oil on it already, so it's ready to go. And I'm going to check it, not by the dial indicator like I showed you and, and many others, but as I thread, the first thing I will do after I take a scratch cut is to use the thread pitch gauge and see if it matches with the 1.75 millimeter. So that concludes the setup here and the gear change for the metric thread cutting. And be sure and stay tuned then for the next video, which will be cutting a metric thread, 12 millimeter by 1.75 or rather, uh, yeah, 1.75 millimeter. Hope you found this interesting. Be sure and watch the other videos as well as my 500 other videos on YouTube. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for this session.